Welcome to chapter 7 of Basic Econometrics. Here we're going to talk about statistical testing in the context of the linear regression model. What is statistical testing and why do we care about it? You might remember that the um, original motivation of why we're studying the linear regression model is that we wanted to have a tool that allows us to estimate causal effects. In the linear regression model, the causal effect of the regressors are tightly linked to the coefficients, um, to the slope coefficients. For example, beta 1 would give the causal effect of changing the regressor x1 by one unit. Now, so these um, the coefficients are population quantities. We don't observe them, but we can estimate them using our OLS estimator. So for example, we can estimate beta 1 by beta 1, the OLS estimator beta 1 hat. And we know this estimator is, is a good estimator. It is unbiased, for example. And we can also use sort of what we've learned about the variance um, to, to determine how precise the estimator is in a certain context. And uh, we can, comp using the um, normal approximation, we can compute probabilities that we obtain very bad estimates. And so we have some idea of how well this estimator works. But what we usually do now when we apply this estimator is that we look at a sample and then we get an estimate and then we say, look, so our estimate is, uh, is, is sort of this number. For example, we estimate that if you study one hour um, extra, you get three extra points on the exam, right? So we, we're talking about the estimate um, and not about the true causal effect. We know that the estimate is kind of a good, est uh, probably a good estimate, um, but sort of where well, we're not really describing the causal, uh, the true causal effect, right? So this is what what we would like to have. We would like to have a mechanism where we look at the observed sample, and then we're not talking about estimates, but then we're making a statement really about the population. We're making a statement about the true beta one, and we want the statement to be um, a, a, a true statement, or actually that will not quite work out, but it we will have a mechanism that allows us to statements that are almost always um, true. And so the mechanism by which we um, achieve this goal is, is called statistical testing. A very important concept in statistical testing is the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is a statement about the population model. It could, for um, example, be a statement about the true causal effect. Or in uh, our um, study time example, the null hypothesis could be, for example, beta 1 is equal to 5. So that every for every hour that you study, you get 5 extra points on the exam. The thing with the null hypothesis is we want to disprove it. The negation of the null hypothesis is called the alternative hypothesis. So in our example, the alternative hypothesis would be beta 1 is unequal 5. If we disprove the null hypothesis, then we show that the alternative hypothesis is true. So the thing that we actually want to prove is that the alternative is true. So it works like this. You have something that you want to show. You negate it. You get your null hypothesis. You disprove the null hypothesis. You have shown that the alternative hypothesis is true. So you have shown that what you've originally wanted to show is, is true. So it's kind of like a proof by contradiction. But how do you disprove the null hypothesis? Well, you disprove the null hypothesis by assuming that it is true and then thinking through what um, the implication that would have for the world. And then you look at the world around you, at the actual world that you observe, and you check, is it compatible with your expectation? And if it's not, then the null hypothesis cannot be true. Remember that what we wanted was to have some mechanism that allows us to look at the sample and then, based on that sample, make a statement about the population. And the decision rule in statistical testing allows us to do just that. So what is the decision rule? A decision rule looks at the sample and then decides whether for, for this sample, we have, uh, based on this sample, we have enough evidence to disprove the null hypothesis. So, and if we are able to disprove the, uh, the null hypothesis, then we, we say we reject the null hypothesis. 
So obviously, um, yeah, so this, this gives us exactly what we wanted, right? Because if we reject the null hypothesis, then we believe the alternative hypothesis. For example, we will believe beta one unequal five. So there you have it. We um, observe a sample, we make a statement about the population, such as beta one unequal five. Obviously we want our decision rule to be reasonable. So we want to have a good, um, um, a good decision rule, but how do we evaluate the quality of a decision rule? Well, we use the same trick that we used when we looked at estimators. So we take a ex ante point of view. So we evaluate the quality of the decision rule before we draw the sample and we can still think of the sample as random. So a good decision rule will, um, will have two properties. First, it will reject only with a certain small probability if the null hypothesis is true. So whenever we reject, right, we are able to make a statement. So this property just says we should make false statement with um, well, we should make fa false statements only with a small probability. And then if we don't reject, we cannot make a statement. And if the null is actually false we would actually would like to make the statements uh, that it is false. So good decision rule also rejects with large probability if the null is false. 